Okay, are you guys ready for chapters three and four? Uh, here we are again in the introduction, chapters one and two. We were introduced to the chickens and we found out that sugar's got everybody convinced they need a shelter. And Dirt says, I think we need to vote on this. And so now let's see what happens. Chapter three. Shing, boosh, plop. Little help here, announced Sugar from the bottom of the hole the next morning. Dirt rubbed the sleep out of her eyes and marched toward the unfinished shelter. Shing, floosh, plop. A spoonful of dirt landed at her feet. Shing, foosh. I thought we agreed to vote on this, Dirt protested from the edge of the hole. Plop. We did, this morning. At 3.30 in the spare tire under the blue tarp in the Connolly's garage next door, said Sugar. I was the only one there. 3.30 in the morning, cried Dirt, under a tarp? Voting is not always convenient, replied Sugar. Sugar, Dirt replied. If we had known that the vote was at 3.30 under the tarp in the Connolly's garage, we would have voted against the shelter and you knew it. Poppy and Sweetie arrived, sleepy-eyed at the hole. Sugar leaned her spoon against the side of the hole and walked up the handle. Fine, everybody's here. Let's vote now. Thank you, Sugar, said Dirt. All in favor of a shelter for everybody. Not so fast, kid, interrupted Sugar. What's the password? Password, asked Dirt. The secret password you need in order to vote, explained Sugar. A secret password to vote? That's unconstitutional. Dirt and Sugar stared at each other from opposite sides of the hole. Sorry, kid. Time's up, Sugar said finally. The correct answer was Shalala. Sugar, growled Dirt. It seems to me that if you've got some special voting rules like no passwords. You should have mentioned it yesterday, said Sugar. It's important for voting rules to be very clear. Don't you agree? Fine, said Dirt. Next time, no passwords. And we all need to know in advance when the vote is going to take place and where the vote is going to take place. Deal, Sugar jerked her head toward the hole. Poppy and Sweetie jumped in. Ooh, ooh, Sweetie. Where did you get all these shiny spoons? Over there, replied Sugar, without pointing her wing in any particular direction. Over where? asked Dirt. Garage sale, replied Sugar. Huh? asked Dirt. Garbage, replied Sugar. What? cried Dirt. Squirrels, replied Sugar. Shing, shing, foosh, foosh. Two spoonfuls of dirt flew out of the hole. Plop, plop. Sugar motioned for dirt to get to work. Dirt refused to move. Suit yourself, replied Sugar. But when a giant space rock is hurtling toward Earth at the speed of light with an impact not seen since the extinction of the dinosaurs and the cavemen, you're going to wish you were in here. Wait a minute, said Poppy from the hole. How's the hole gonna keep us safe from a space rock hurtling toward Earth at the speed of light? I haven't worked out all the details yet, kid, said Sugar. We might need some kind of door. I don't understand you, Sugar, said Dirt. That's because you are not a sugarologist, yelled Sweetie from the hole. Shing, foosh, plop. That's not a word, Sweetie replied Dirt, avoiding another plop launching out of the hole. And you, madam, are clearly not a wordologist, Sugar remarked. Shitting foosh plop. I can't be a wordologist. It's not a real thing. Dirt was exasperated. Mom says you can be anything you want to be, Dirt, said Poppy from the hole. Don't you ever forget it. Shing clunk. What was that? asked Dirt. I'm not sure, answered Sweetie from the hole. Does anybody know a good clunkologist? Dirt let out a heavy sigh. <sighs> Probably.
probably just a rock, said Sugar. Shing clunk. Doesn't look like a rock, announced Sweetie. Dirt left Sugar standing at the edge of the hole and jumped in, where something large and smooth lay partially uncovered at the bottom. Dirt brushed off the area around it to get a closer look. After a few moments of concentration, Dirt finally spoke. This is not a rock, said Dirt in her most serious voice. What is it? asked Sugar. Poppy, sweetie, said Dirt. I think you may have uncovered a bone. Chapter four. What kind of b -b -b bone? asked Poppy, taking a giant backward step away from their discovery. Dinosaur, announced Sugar. Female, T-Rex, leg bone. I think we need more info, said Dirt. Let's vote on it, interrupted Sugar. Here and now with no passwords, who says it's a leg bone of a female T-Rex? I do, said Sweetie. I do, said Poppy. I do, said Sugar. And there you have it. That's not the thing you can, kind of thing you can vote on, Sugar, said Dirt. Who thinks Dirt is unconstitutional? Asked Sugar, raising her wing. I do, said Sweetie. I do, said Poppy. I do, said Sugar. Dirt sat on her bottom, crossed her legs, closed her eyes, and took a long, deep breath. If it is a bone, then we need to treat it very, very carefully. Dirt's right, said Sugar. That T-Rex bone has probably been here since the meteor struck a hundred years ago, wiping out dinosaurs and all the cavemen. Cave people, Sugar, Sweetie corrected her. Cave people. Um, Sugar, a moment. Dirt pulled his, her sister to the side. Before you get Poppy and Sweetie too excited, I think a timeline might be helpful here. Dirt opened her notebook and drew a timeline showing the millions of years between the dinosaur extinction and the ex existence of cave people. I think you're forgetting something, Dirt, said Sugar. What's that? Unicorns, said Sugar. Unicorns aren't extinct, Dirt explained. They never existed. Then how do we know what they look like, asked Sugar. Well, because, Dirt began, um, that's not really a fair question. Sounds like something we should vote on, said Sugar. You can't vote unicorns into existence, declared Dirt. As I was saying, Shelter announced, ignoring Dirt's protest and turning back to Poppy and Sweetie. The Shelter is, no is now also an important scientific discovery site, and the spoons are no longer proper tools for excavation. That much I agree with, said Dirt. So, continued Sugar, we're going to need power tools and the blowtorch from the Connolly's garage. Sugar, said Dirt. For starters, we do not have permission to go into the Connolly's garage. If I remember, avoiding the Connolly's garage is what cost you the vote the last time, said Sugar. You might want to reconsider. Sugar, we need to treat the bone carefully, said Dirt. Dirt has a point, agreed Sugar. Grab all the brushes you can find in the house. Paint brushes, toothbrushes, hair brushes, said Sugar, but not the round yellow brush in the bathroom. Will it damage the bone, asked Poppy. No. I used that one for volume after I shampoo, replied Sugar. I've always wondered how you got your feathers so fluffy, Poppy exclaimed. I find a little hairspray at the roots really helps too, Sugar said with a wink. I love sugarology, said Poppy. How do we get into the house, asked Sweetie. Just move the pot of chrysanthemums next to the hose, explained Sugar. Why, asked Poppy. Because then you can remove the loose brick that doesn't look like a loose brick because I put it back so carefully after I removed it, Sugar replied. Ooh, how did you do that, asked Poppy. With some power tools and a blowtorch I borrowed from the Connolly's garage. What? cried Dirt. Sugarology is fun, said Sweetie, as she and Poppy ran toward the chrysanthemums. I'm learning so much. 
that was chapters three and four. I'm starting to get a little worried about them with the power tools and the blowtorch. We'll see what happens tomorrow.